The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I want to tell you about a man that the community of Flatbush in Brooklyn, New York, nobody really knew until after he passed away who he really was. And it's funny like that. There are a lot of stuff that came out there that while they were living, we didn't really get how great they were. We didn't really kind of use their greatness or connect to them in ways that we could have. And you know how the saying goes, you don't appreciate what you have until you no longer have it. And many Sadiqim were this way. They hid themselves. They didn't want anyone real, really to know. I want to tell you about a gentleman that in Brooklyn, they used to nickname him Mendel the Coat Rack. Now, if you were ever driving around Brooklyn a few years back, you'd see that there was an older man, looks a little bit like a Hasidi type of a Jew, but he was wrapped in this plastic from head to toe. He looked like a homeless guy. He was wearing jackets and sweaters, layer after layer, pile after pile. He would be walking up and down the streets in the middle of the gutter, middle of the street, not on the sidewalk, literally in between cars. And he'd be walking with his walker, and he'd be humming, and he'd be singing, and people look at him, and what are you doing? Get out of the street. Cars are coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's going, and, he, and people thought that was out of his mouth. And he was known to stop people, random people in the street and say, can you give me a ride? I gave him a ride a few times. And I remember helping, I used to call him Reb Mendel. I helped him into my car, into my minivan, folded up his walker, put him in the back, and we started to drive. I said, Reb Mendel, where do you need to go? He said, oh, I need, I need to go to Avenue J and Ocean Parkway. I said, no problem. I drive him through the traffic. We finally get to J and Ocean Park. Right when we pull up to the spot, he says to me, oh, I forgot. I really meant I need to go to Avenue S and Coney Island. I said, uh-huh. Okay. So I turn around the car. And I go back to S and Coney Island. As I'm pulling up to S and Coney Island, he says to me, whoa, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I forgot. The spot that you picked me up over there on Team 13th, I really need to be there. Could you take me back to where you picked me up? Take him back, drop him off when he picked him up. He would get out of the car, right at the spot that you picked him up in the first place, pull out his walker, and he would tell me, Adam, thank you very much. And you look at the guy, wait one second, we went to Avenue J, we went to Avenue, we came back to, we were doing Shivan Hakafot on Ezra, and, and you, yeah. And we would look at him. I thought it was just me. But then when I started speaking to other people in the neighborhood, I heard that I wasn't only the lucky one. <laughs> Many people got the opportunity to give Remendel a sightseeing tour of Flatbush. Back and forth. And they would go from stop. So what does he wear? And, and people would say, the guy's not in. Come on. He's not in his right mind. And he walks in the middle of the street. He's covered with plastic. He's wearing 10 clothing. One day, Remendel comes walking down the block, right down the block from the famous shul land that on Avenue L and East Ninth. So he walks down between K and L and East Ninth, and he walks up to a house. It was early in the morning, and he knocks on the door. And it was almost a quarter to eight in the morning. It's pretty early to knock on somebody's door. And he knocks and he knocks. Nobody answers. So he starts pressing the intercom, and he's holding the button down. And he's literally holding the button down. And you know what that could sound like on inside. So finally, the voice comes from upstairs to the intercom. Who is it? He says, it's Mendel. He says, you hear the voice of the, the wife. Oh, yeah, hey. <laughs> Mendel. It's, a, it's early. It's, it's not even 8 o'clock. Mendel, what's the matter? Is your husband home? Yeah, one minute. The husband comes to the door. Mendel. Well, what, what are you doing here? It's, 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 it's early. I didn't go to Davin yet. You know. I mean, I just came back from Davin. I didn't go to eating breakfast yet. Get to What's going on? He says, no, 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 no. I, I'm not going to bother you. He says, listen, I'm happy. I'm not going to take away from your breakfast. He says, you Davin, I just want to use the bathroom. So, okay. All right. What are you going to tell him? Okay. Well, call Israel. A Jew needs the facilities. He's homeless. So he helps Remendel up the stairs and into the house. 
remembers walking through the guy's living room with his walker step by step. And he turns back to Balabite and says, Remendo, listen, I'm quickly eating breakfast. I got to run to the city. I'm, I'm late. It's, 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 you know, it's the beginning of the week. I, I got to get there on time. So please just use the facilities and yell out. That's it. And then go. So like this, no problem. He takes another two steps. He stops. He looks at the painting on the wall. This is a nice painting. <laughs> he says, Remendo, do me a favor. This is not a joke. I have meetings this morning. It's, it's, it's Monday. It's the beginning of the week. I've got to be there on time. i got to get to the city. Remember, listen, just use, use the bathroom. Let me go. He says, yeah, 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 don't worry. He takes another two steps. He stops by the guy's break front. He says, wow, you have beautiful crystal. You have beautiful. The guy starts getting the lullaby. He says, Mendel, enough. Use the bathroom, please. He says, yeah, 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 don't worry. He wakes his way up to the bathroom and he goes inside. And then... Click. Five minutes. Ten minutes. Twenty minutes. This guy is pacing back and forth, and he's pacing back and forth. What is he doing in there already? I got to get to the city. I got to get to work. So he bangs on the door. Mendel, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Coming out in a few minutes. He bangs again. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Finally, the guy looks at his watch. It's already 8.20. He has to get to the city. He's already late. He has to go. He was supposed to leave already almost uh, 25 minutes ago. He's late. So he bends on the He says, Mendel, let's go. He says, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. He turns to his wife. He says, honey, listen, I got a meeting. I, I got to be in the city. I got to leave. I'm sorry. She says, are you crazy? <laughs> You're not leaving me here. Are you joking me? Until he goes. You're not going with me. You're not going with me. That's talking. Hey, one of my arms are late that he's pacing. He bangs and bangs. Another five minutes. Finally, Mendel comes out. Mendel looks around and says, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But thank you so much for letting me use the, the facility. He starts walking out of the house and he stops. And he looks up at the wall and he says, this is a beautiful painting. He said, hey, Mendel. Out. Arois. That's it. Out. Remember leaves. Just then the man grabs his keys. And then the news hits. That morning was 9-11. And he worked. He worked in the 97th floor of the first tower. Wow. And he jumps into his car. And he hears the news. And he just found out. I was doing him a favor. Oh, he's doing me a favor. We don't know where the Yeshua is going to come from. We don't know who Borei Olam is going to send. We know one thing. Yeshuaat Hashem Keheref Ayin. That I know. How? Where? What? When? Who? I don't know. And I'll never know. Because every time Borei Olam wants to send the Yeshua, He'll bring it from a place that you least expected and from the person that you least expected it to come from. To open your eyes and you'll realize that the next time you walk by that person, boy, will you give them Shalom Aleichem. Boy, will you look at them differently. Boy, will you realize, and this is Mamash Klal Yisrael. Do you know that this man, for the rest of Remendel's life, this guy, the story I just told you, he would run and look for him and bring him food. He would run and ask him to give him rub. He saved his life. And Remendel wouldn't take a thing. He wouldn't take a thing. He wouldn't take a thing. He said, no, what are you talking about? And he said, Remendel, you saved my life. I worked in the Twin Towers. They, they came crashing down because of you. I well, I needed to use the facilities. What are you talking about? I don't... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Never forget. And that's the point. Rabbi Akiva had 12,000 zugot of students, 12,000 pairs, and they stuck in pairs. And there was something there, Ben Adam al that we can't understand on our level, but we can recognize when it comes to people that might not look exactly like us, or maybe not have our same last name, or maybe not have the exact status of our social circles, and because of that, we don't, we don't, we don't really 
And then these stories happen and we open up our eyes. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.